right, good morning everybody. We are out in St. Johns County at the Aleska residence and we are starting a quite major project here. It's going to be basically the whole foundational plantings of the home and we're, we're doing a patio in the backyard. Uh, we had tried to pitch a water feature but they didn't quite go with that. Came about meeting Mr. Lesker via his volunteer work at the Caddy Shack and he saw what project that we pulled off there recently with a beautiful water feature. We really appreciate your considering us for, for doing your project for you and, and maybe you want to talk a little bit about the Caddy Shack. The bottom line is I think if, if Earthworks was, was good enough for our tigers um, and the animals out there for their safety and comfort, um, then it was good enough for me. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, the, the, the Caddy Shack, if, not, if anybody's not familiar with it, is a, uh, is a sanctuary up in the northern part of the county that um, um, houses tigers. Uh, we have a couple lions, four foxes, uh, three cotamundis, um, and these are animals that, that come to us either through people just dropping them off or basically raids <laughs> on, on facilities or zoos that have closed down. And it's a forever home for them. We never buy, sell, trade um, any of the animals. So once they're there, they're there for their life. So it's a, it's a great place and undergoing, uh, starting a major renovation project to the grounds. And the first step was the work that Earthworks did in creating this uh, nice, nice, unbelievable water feature for three of our tigers. So we're excited about this project here. It's going to be all-encompassing, as I say, and at the moment it's just a destruction area. So over the next few days, probably a week, week and a half, we're going to redo everything, and it's going to turn out beautiful. As everybody knows, um, Florida weather is unbelievably hot, and because I spend so much time out um, working with either a caddy shack or uh, volunteering with various um, high schools and sports programs, I pretty much have had enough of the heat. And furthermore, I just wanted to simplify everything. And so that's why we thought we'd bring in Earthworks to help us simplify that in addition to uh, providing that curb appeal for the Jonathan Creek Plantation. One of our biggest obstacles, when we first got out here, right here up front, it was hedges. It was a uh, viburnum. Roots from the viburnum were wrapped around the, a lot of the irrigation pipes under, underneath. So we tried to go in with shovels and couldn't get it. We ended up bringing plywood out, brought our bobcat machine up to pretty much yank them out. Spoke with the homeowner. He knew it was gonna be a little bit of damage. It was nothing we couldn't fix in the end. Um, ended up being very successful. But uh, <laughs> y'all was about to start laughing. You all right? <laughs> hey, I, I, I all about to bust out left. <laughs> One of the biggest things we did out here was this paver job. The yard looked completely different than it did when we first got out here. We did all the landscaping, some gravel beds. It took us a few days, but we're wrapping it up now. Uh, just doing the mulch and final touch-ups, final clean-up. Good morning, everybody. Doing our, our final wrap-up. As you can see in the foreground, we got some very pretty salvia. Super easy. I've got about a dozen bumblebees out here who are going to town on the salvia. And I know for the people who are afraid of bees and the idea of having the bees actually, as you can see, I'm actually touching the bee. They are so enthralled with the flower that they're not really worried about the human around them. So the bees and the butterflies absolutely love salvia. Um, it will bloom pretty much year round. It tolerates cold weather very well. Um, gives you a really nice long season of color. Um, as we walk along, we've got you know, kind of uh, standard background plants. We've got some Pringles podocarpus, which are low maintenance uh, podocarpus that doesn't get much more than say knee high. Um, we've got some blue days, which Again, is another flower that typically blooms year-round here. Um, it's, it's actually perennial in the south. It's an annual up north. And it, too, will draw bees and butterflies and whatnot. And behind them, we've got some uh, kaleidoscope abelia, which has a little white bloom on it. it. has a little bit of yellow in the foliage. Again, very easy. doesn't get real tall. 
And in this case where it's in front of a porch, it'll stay low without a lot of, a lot of care. We jump the blue days both sides, so it kind of gives a feel of walking through a landscape rather than just walking a side of the landscape. And then as a, a specimen type plant, we've got a drift rose tree form, and they typically will do really well from about the month of October until it gets hot again midsummer. Um, the abelias jumped over here, and then we've got another variety of salvia called Amistad, and this one will get, by next year, be about two, two and a half feet tall, and it will draw hummingbirds. Again, super easy to care for. And then we tied in some dwarf bottle brush, which will also attract hummingbirds, and those will bloom um, heaviest in the spring, and then uh, you get spits throughout the rest of the year. So we've got a, a lot of interest going on in the front now so that if a potential home buyer walks up, it's going to give them a bright, cheery atmosphere as they walk up in the, and some pride in the house that they're looking to buy. So we are now in the backyard at the Oleskers. Uh, as you can see, I'm working hard or possibly hardly working. I like to do that more so than the first part. We didn't have a patio out here. We had a concrete slab and a lot of mucky mucky and we now have this very pretty outdoor entertaining area which incorporated a Romanesque circle which they can use for either table space or possibly set up a, uh, a portable fire pit. It makes the space multi-functional in that you're not limited by building an actual fire pit into the area. So if for some reason you're having a large group and you need table, you can just whip it out into the circle and it all works very well. Um, in the foreground, you can see we have some lime sizzler firebush. Blooms all summer long. Uh, in the height of the summer, the foliage will be a bit more yellow. As the days get shorter, it tends to start turning towards green. Um, it will have some foliage in the winter, but maybe not quite as heavy as it does throughout the summer. We've repeated some of the salvia. And then you're going to see that we've got some blue days out here. And I like to have threads of continuity so that when you're walking around a yard that you recall, gee, we saw that in the front yard and it's in the rear yard as well. And it helps to add some sense that it all was planned and made some sense and we just didn't run out to Lowe's and do the front yard one weekend, backyard a different weekend. We've got some evergreen plants that if uh, we get a close up, there are some big buds on those. Those are shishi camellias. They will bloom starting around Thanksgiving. The goal on this planting is kind of have interest in, in color throughout the year. So we've got some good summer color. And then as we go into the fall and the winter, you're gonna see that we have camellias and azaleas and, and whatnot, which are going to give us some really nice winter color as well. As you look over here, we've got an orange bird of paradise, and then we've got some sedum. This is a lemon ball sedum, and it kind of mimics the coloration that we saw over in that fire bush, and then the blue days, and I think this will all pop. Uh, the orange birds typically bloom when they choose to, so when it does bloom, we'll have an orange, a yellow, and a blue going on over here. And then as you see, we've got one of the varieties of camellias just starting to bloom, and this variety is called Yuletide. It's an upright camellia and uh, has a smaller leaf, it's a sasanqua. And then we've got underneath of the magnolia tree, we've got a purple bloom, and this is called Tibuchina. It's somewhat tropical. If it freezes hard, it will disappear down, but being underneath the canopy of the magnolia will help protect it a bit from the frost. And then that lime green color plays off nicely with the foxtail fern with the tibuchina. As we look over here, we had some dwarf bottle brush in the front yard, and in the rear, we went with a weeping bottle brush tree, which will give us a red bloom in the spring real heavy. That again draws hummingbirds as well. And then we've got some of that Amistad salvia that we saw in the front and some blue days in the foreground. 
We're using the protocarpus to kind of break up the fence line, not to give you a sense that you're all closed in. And then we've got some agapanthus, which will bloom uh, in late spring next year. We've got some drift roses, which are going to give us some nice fall winter color. And then again, we've repeated the shishi camellias that we had up by the house over here against the fence. So these two sides will interact with each other. And then lastly, we've got a different variety of camellia in this back corner, which will bloom probably January, February. That is a, a camellia japonica, and that's a white bloom on that, that plant with some low growing conversation piece azaleas in front of it, which will be pink. So as you pan out here, there's a bunch of color, and the cool thing is it's all very low maintenance with the exception of say the podocarpus, there's very little that you actually have to trim out here. Eventually the camellias will need a little bit of nip tuck, but that's going to be a couple years down the road. And all of these other plants basically are either smaller varieties or things that typically don't need a lot of care. So that's what the homeowner was really hoping for. Um, as you can see, it, it kind of takes away from the fact that we had this fence and we felt like we were closed in, so now it feels like you're in a whole garden area and it's got a really nice feel. Uh, little tricks that, that don't necessarily show to the general <laughs> population are the fact that the weeping bottle brush, as it starts to cascade down, helps to create some privacy by it cuts off the view of this, the intersection that's a couple hundred yards off to the east. As this grows in, I think you're going to see it fill in. It's going to be quite beautiful. And if you'd like to do a project along this order, or you're thinking you may want to consider you know, sprucing up your property for selling in the future, um, you can use these techniques in your yard. My job is done here. We are now flamingo worthy. The guys are at attention in the foreground. Thank you for stopping by and checking us out. And uh, if you'd like to, to pull off a project like this, please give us a call at Earthworks. If you're thinking you're gonna do this in the spring, I'd really advise you to get in there soon because we are getting booked up all the way into the month of January as we speak. So don't wait too long and uh, hopefully we can talk with you. Thank you.